When it comes to this strategy formulation discussion involving sales managers, um, I have this um, idea that it's, it's like looking through different sets of glasses. And you know when you go to the optician and he sits you down and puts uh, this little gizmo here on you and starts putting the different lenses in and says, did that make it clearer? Does that make it fuzzier? Um, and, you know, sometimes you just have to keep edging towards that perfect vision. Um, and that's what it's like in a negotiation. You're trying to see things from somebody else's point of view. They hopefully are trying to see it from your point of view and you edge together uh, until the clarity is achieved and you can both move forward um, knowing exactly what you're going to do. Now, there's historic problems associating the uh, involvement of sales management in strategy formulation. And, and I have pointed out in the book that I've been at um, conferences for marketing academics where very uh, erudite people have told me that, you know, well, marketing does the strategy and sales is operational. Sales should just go out there and implement it. But in my real life in the IT industry, it wasn't like that at all. Uh, the sales function was very, very powerful. The sales function owned the relationship with customers. And so consequently, their involvement in strategy formulation was a must if the right strategy was going to be implemented with the right customers to get the right results. So the whole um, history of marketing writing a plan and just assuming or hoping that sales will implement it is very much a thing of the past in, in most professional companies these days. Um, it's possible if you have a disconnect that sales will get mixed messages and those largely derive from, you've already mentioned, um, incentives um, focusing on volume rather than the focus of the plan. Um, and also the subcultures building up about um, uh, different viewpoints on um, how sales sees the world, how marketing sees the world. And with the a historic assumption that sales is short term and marketing is long term. It doesn't have to be that way. Okay, now I'm, I'm sure many of you will have heard of this and agreed with it. Um, the recent research shows that sales and marketing integration delivers business performance. Um, and that's partly because it means that the motivation of sales and marketing comes together in a positive way. Um, they're both um, achieving the same uh, objectives uh, and feeling better about their better understanding. Um, and that's very visible to customers who can respond to it. It's, it's actually true that the way you do sales and marketing um, it can be your differential with customers and they can admire the way that you approach them and, and you have customer focus as a difference um, between companies. So what characterizes this coming together in the negotiation? Um, first of all, communication, but not too much. Um, what do you think happens if you get too much communication? Too much talking, not enough doing. Yes, very true. Overload of information. Overload, yeah. The communication needs to be very structured. And when you have good structured communication, um, that means that this strategy formulation will come together uh, in a very positive way. Now, understanding but not groupthink. Does anybody know the expression groupthink? This comes from psychology, it goes back to the 1960s where a psychologist was looking at attitudes to the Vietnam War among the uh, US government and military and the, mili the defense industry. And um, what he concluded was that where everybody starts seeing things 
um, in a, a kind of funneled way, um, then you're probably going to have difficulty um, realizing what reality is telling you. Um, so it's possible to have a clear vision but also have creative conflict almost uh, in the way that you put that vision together. Um, so it's not that we want um, sales and marketing to fuse. We want their different viewpoints, um, but we want them to understand in a way that's constructive. Ian. The view of, of sales and marketing being separate entities um, can be dependent on, on the, the nature of the organisation. For example, in a business-to-business -business environment, marketing is very often seen as a sales support function, whereas in a consumer environment, sales is actually very often seen as an integral part of your marketing operation. So channel management, which is mm -hmm. fundamentally sales management, is just seen as a, a, a natural part of your marketing mix. So, you know, what are your views? Because you're, you're talking about the, the nature of, your, of what you've said so far is viewing sales and marketing as separate things. But my experience is that you know, it depends on, on you know, the nature of the organisation. What, what, what's, mm -hmm. your, what's your viewpoint on that? Well, it's interesting that in a lot of fast-moving consumer goods companies, which are you know, obviously creating demand pull from consumers, but also um, it's very important for them to have a strong sales function negotiating with retailers, um, that you do see the role chief customer officer or chief revenue officer in the States. Um, and here, I think um, throughout many sectors, we do um, increasingly see sales and marketing directors or business development directors. Um, so there is progress throughout all sectors, I think, in bringing sales and marketing together. Um, and that's a positive thing as far as I'm concerned. And most um, professional effort that's, that's going into sales management, um, development and education um, is enabling that to happen. Um, and I think also for marketers, I mean, I, um, the evidence of the historical split, I think, is, is actually in curriculum. Um, you can look at a lot of uh, marketing courses where sales is barely mentioned. Um, now, that, again, I think is changing. Um, it's so that uh, you do get this coming together of marketing and sales to a kind of revenue generation department um, that will um, really perform some uh, very uh, strategic impact, create strategic impact in the company. I mean, business development uh, is a way of getting away from even talking about sales and marketing as separate, so that helps.